Okay, in this section 73, we're going to talk about population proportion uh, and the confidence intervals associated with those. So we'll start off with an example, but let me go ahead and write some stuff here. So these are going to be Z distributions that we actually use for the um, population proportion. And so our, our Z value is going to be given by P prime minus P over the square root of that PQ divided by N. And P prime is the sample proportion. That's what our textbook um, uh, denotes it as. Um, however, uh, P hat is what your uh, TI 84 will denote that as there. Okay, so a bit of a just notation there. So first off in this problem, we see that it's telling us to get a confidence interval. So that's the key thing there. Now, as opposed to our means, usually it would give us means and standard deviations. This is not going to give us that information. It's actually going to just end up giving us a total and then how many um, successes we had in this case or how many replies we had that were similar to that. The other key thing is that it actually says the word proportion right in there. So that's the other kind of giveaway there. But notice the values are giving you, right, it's not means and standard deviations. It's kind of your total and then responses to that. So let's do a little sketch here since we know we're using a Z distribution with the proportion. And so here's our proportion where we're trying to figure out the true population proportion. And right smack in the middle is going to be our point estimator, which is going to be the sample proportion. So our N is 500. That's how many people we surveyed. Our X is what we're keeping track of. We're keeping track of those that actually said yes. So that's the number of, risk of, uh, of successes there. So our P hat... So proportion of yeses here is going to be 421 out of 500, which is about 0.842 or so. Again, this is what your calculator is going to call P hat. That's what your TI-84 as opposed to P prime. So right smack in the middle is 0.842. That's our point estimator. That's the proportion of yeses from our sample. But again, we don't want to commit to just one single value. We want to make a little cushion around it. And so there's kind of our cushion there. And so we want our cushion to include that middle 95% because that's the confidence level that we're interested in. So on our calculator, we're going to use the one prop Z interval tool. And it's going to ask for your X number of successes. And note that X has to be a whole number. A lot of times it might give an error if you have a decimal. So make sure you're rounding that correctly. Um, N and then our confidence level. And it's giving us something, I think I'm rounding this, about 0.81 to about 0.87 or so. So the number of yeses um, from our sample is about, uh, about 84% or so. But if we make a cushion around there, we're going to say it could really be probably anywhere from 81 to 87. That's our, that's our confidence uh, uh, interval that we have there. So that goes up to 87 and that goes up to 81. So writing that out, we would say that we are 95% confident that the true population proportion is going to be between 81% and 87%. And this gives us a bit more leniency when we start reporting this right here. There we go. Okay. So again... It's possible that we got this completely wrong and it's, you know, not somewhere within there, but we're pretty confident. We're 95% confident it's going to be somewhere within there, okay? You might hear this on magazines or so, something like 84%, give or take 3% or so, and that give or take is kind of the error that we have. So our point estimator, just to get some vocabulary going here, is going to just be that sample proportion, about 84.2% there. Our error, if you recall, we're always going to end up doing our upper minus our point estimator because we're plugging it in our calculator. So that makes it a lot easier for us to do. There we go. About uh, 2.8 or so. And our critical values, since it's a Z distribution here, we're going to use an inverse norm 
area to the left, which is 0.025, uh, 0, 1, because we're using the standard normal uh, in this case here. And actually, uh, let me correct this. I should be a bit more precise with our decimals there. There we go. And so that's going to give us um, uh, negative 1.96. But again, it's symmetric, so we could go ahead and do the positive and negative case here. Whoops. There we go. And then uh, and notice, let me write this in. This is going to be our 0 0.025 is the area there, and then 0 0.025 is the area right in there. Okay. Let's try another one of these. All right. And again, I'll let you read through this, and you could go ahead and uh, pause it, and then I'll get involved here. Okay. So a uh, student polls uh, his school here. And so let's look at A. They want us to compute a 90% confidence interval uh, for this. Okay. So here's our Z distribution. And the reason, again, look at the data it gives us. It's telling us a survey of 600 students find that 480 are against it. So this is going to end up being our X. I'm sorry. That's going to end up being our N. And that's going to end up being our X. No standard deviations, no means. So we know it's a proportion here. And it actually tells us the confidence interval for the true percent. And we know a percent is the same as a proportion. Okay, so there's 600. There is 480. Our p hat is going to be 480 over 600. Okay, so there's our 0.80 label there, our 90% towards in the center. And so our uh, point estimator is at point 0.80. And we're going to use a one proxy interval here. So put in, it's going to ask you for your X. It's going to ask you for your N, your confidence level. And when we plug that into our calculator, we get about 0.7731 to about 0.8269. And so the interpretation would be that we are 90% confident. Okay, sorry, I think that's sketch. Okay, so we are 90% confident that the true population proportion um, is going to be between, and we could roughly say about 77.3% and 82.7% uh, or so. And so that's what we're labeling right there, that lower and upper end. Now we want to talk about in terms of Z-scores, which are the critical values, so these alphas halves, um, we're going to get our inverse norm area to the left, 0, 1, because we're talking to you about the standard normal for your mean and standard deviation, and we'll have our positive and negative values there. Okay, so the second part here, it wanted us in a sample of 300 students, 68% uh, said that they in my uh, pod here. Okay, we'll compute the 97% confidence interval, so here's our image, the middle 97 there's our p hat here. And so the trick here is our x value. So our n is 300. Our p hat they're giving us this time, which is 0.68. Um, or uh, p prime. And so uh, our x value... They're giving us that it's 68%, but 68% of the 300. So we're going to have to multiply those two values there. And it's going to give us uh, uh, about 204. Now, note, if this becomes a decimal, your calculator will not like that decimal value. So you have to round it uh, to the nearest whole number. So make sure you round that correctly there. So um, always round to whole number uh, for X here. Okay, and again, it's uh, the percentage, so we know it wants a proportion. So we're using um, a one prop Z interval. And 
and it's going to ask you for your X, your N, and your confidence level. And that's going to give us about 0.6216 and 0.7384. Um, I forgot here to calculate the error. That might be helpful. Uh, if you recall, the error is always the uh, upper minus that point estimate there. Um, and we'll do that for this as well. So uh, we are 97% confident that the uh, uh, true population proportion is going to be uh, between roughly 62.2% uh, and 73.8% or so. And again, our critical values here or the Z alpha half, we're going to use our inverse norm. And area to the left is 0 0.015 because there's 3% left over and we divide that by 2. 0 and 1 because it's our standard normal. And so that gives us our upper lower end and in our error, we do the upper minus that point estimate in this case. So roughly about 5.8%. And so this gives us two good examples here of all the different calculations that we might need to calculate. Notice we're not using the tables or charts. We're going directly to our calculator to plug that stuff in. And so with that, I'll let that kind of go a bit fast here. To recap what we did in Chapter 7, we have two different types of stuff that uh, we could go through here. We have means and proportions. So if we have means, there's two different uh, ways we could go. You could either know that sigma is given or not given. If sigma is given, we're using a z-interval. If sigma is not given, then we're using a t-interval. If we're doing proportions, so if it gives you stuff like percentages, x and uh, um, n values, those p-hats, then we're going to do a one prop Z interval. So these are the three different confidence intervals we covered in this chapter, and that'll kind of decide, uh, help you decide which one to actually go to on your calculator.